Where are we? Detroit. I can't hear you, Maggie. Detroit. I can't hear you, Detroit! It came to my attention, and the moment I read it, I was like, I'm getting this movie. <laughs> to which I achieved my goal. Yeah. I'm playing Grace Davis, and I am a singing superstar <laughs> who is at a pivotal place in her career and life as she struggles to bring out the part of her that the world has never, has never seen. I play her manager, Jack. They've been together for a long time. This assistant is really an undercover producer. And she's really using this assistant gig to secretly become a producer. And um, her trying to navigate this world and you know the, the hell of being a, an assistant to a diva-like superstar, at the same time trying to reach her dreams uh, of actually doing music and not just being an assistant. Maggie is someone who is exists within me and within a lot of people that I know. She's talented and um, super ambitious, and I really wanted to see a movie with that woman at the center of it. I think it's very powerful. It's a great role model for young women, and I think that she's funny and self-deprecating and always working harder, always trying to become better, whether it's a better person or a better musician or a better assistant. I thought you left your phone in the car. Yeah, my, I left my phone in the car. This is my work phone. Okay, you know what? Listen to me, Maggie. Yeah. Phone down, eyes on me. Yeah. I know you think that she's gonna give you this like life-changing shot, and you guys are gonna ride off into the sunset holding hands or some shit. But I think we need to consider the possibility that this woman doesn't even know your last name. We are like this. <laughs> the singing. Um, is something I've always wanted to do. Um, I obviously come from a legacy of chanteuse. I come from a legacy of singing. And as a kid, it was something I always wanted to do. And I just kind of went in a different direction, but it was a, a big dream. And I had to face the dream and the fear all in one. <laughs> and it's been great. She wants the world to know that she's stronger than she's ever been. And it was, it was so personal to her and even me. And we kind of shared this similar journey with like parents being musicians. And, you know, I mean, her parents are very, very successful musicians. You know, I don't, you know, not the same, but, you know, I respect them. They're great. But to, to kind of take that and we've, we've, we've kind of took, took a different route and, and started acting. And that became our, our outlet, our, our, our thing that made us us to, to experience this. It's is different. It's very vulnerable. And, it was, it was nice to do that together because we just kind of fed off of each other. Tracy is really incredible. She is super talented and super smart and super kind. And she has been prepping so much for this film and has really transformed into, into like a full blown icon. I've been a fan of Tracy for a long time. I always thought she was very funny, ha has a great presence. I, I used to watch her show Girlfriends. She seems to find these great projects, you know, being on Blackish. So to work with her, I was, you know, pretty stoked about it. Ice Cube is fantastic. He, on the surface, is like, like this burly man that's got like prickles. He's like prickly and he's like a mush ball when you see those eyes. Once you get in those eyes, you're done. And I feel like once Cube was cast, and we started playing, it defined Grace. The role is great for me because I've seen all types of managers through, through my career. And, you know, some of them have bigger personalities than, than the acts that they're managing. So that's the kind of manager I wanted to be. A guy who damn near thinks he's the star. You know, he dresses sharp every day. He's ready for success, and he's putting a lot of pressure on her to keep the gravy train going. Let's go over the list. No, I don't want to go over the set list. Grace, come on. I get off this goddamn plane right You're now. You're going to get off the plane, Jack? Give me another red vine. You know what? 20% of that's mine. Unbelievable. I just love music. I have my whole life. I love it almost more than I love movies because I love it in purely an emotional way. I don't have any sort of technical attachment 
to music. When I watch a movie, I'm studying and I'm, and I'm watching and I'm looking, I'm dissecting, I'm learning. But when I'm listening to music or watching music, I don't, I, it's purely emotional. Because I played jazz piano and trumpet, it did give me a little bit of background into like what, you know, music and, and what that process is like and creating. And I did, like I recorded some songs like the Marsalis Family and like I've been in the studio before, but it was, it's just not the same when, you know, you have someone as great as they are doing something very specific and they're there to kind of guide you and you know that like this is not about you. Whereas I'm supposed to be like an actual artist who's confident or coming into his confidence about who he is and writing songs. It was just, it was very specific, but it, it gave me the, the understanding of the world. And I could kind of take these references and pulls from my, my life growing up as a kid. And so it was all these small little details that, um, that kind of worked out for me coming from the family I did. Nisha Ganatra, our extraordinary director, who gives the best notes. She like lets you do your thing as an actor. You, she'll, she'll just come over with like a gentle, quiet nod. And then all of a sudden she'll give you this like, like laser note that is a diamond in the rough that changes your whole performance. You said you was gonna listen to me this time. All I wanna do is play it safe so we can stack some money. It's pathetic. No, you pathetic. Cause you arguing with me and your ass should be on vocal rest. I will decide what I want to do next. Yeah. Give me the popsicles, Maggie. Yeah. The fact that Tracy sounds so good singing was another reason I did the movie. You know, the, the movie is great, uh, but the music has to be, you know, just as good as the script. Tracy sounds great. She, she sounds like she's been singing forever. And so the music, you know, being produced well, to me, was a big deal. So much great music in the film. And let me just say that Corinne Bailey Ray, who was a songwriter and singer that I loved and have loved and love, wrote one of the songs that I'm singing. Show the front door. Aha! And then Sarah Aaron's, yeah, the music has been really beautiful and fun. Is the food coming, sir? We've been over this. We are not a drive through Well, it should be. It could be. Oh my god. Is that Grace Davis? No. Bye -bye.